Okay, so we just went through A, B, and C of this problem, which were um, finding the in intervals of increase or decrease of f. That was A. B was finding the minimums of f. And then C was finding the maximums of f. And now, with D and E, we have to find the concavity, right, intervals of concavity of f, and the inflection points of f. And so just really quick, if we have some arbitrary function, say it looks like that, right, concavity talks about where is f concave up and where is it concave down, right? And so you can think of concavity just like as like a bowl shape, right? So like, just like a U or like an upside down U, right? So if we look at F and think about like bowl shape, right? Where is F concave down? Well, that's where we have like a, like an upside down bowl. Um, and so if you look, that occurs right here, right? Somewhere along this interval is going to be our interval of concave down, right? Concave up is the opposite. It's where we have an, uh, well, a, a up facing bowl. So this way, right? So F is concave up over this interval, right? And wherever you draw the line, right? If you, you eye it, it's like right here. Ooh, losing. Okay. Like right there. Right, that's where it switches concavity. That is called the inflection point of F. Right, so from here to here, that's concave down. And then from here onward, that's concave up. So, um, if you haven't yet, uh, you will eventually. Uh, the second derivative is probably the easiest way to give you information about concavity of F. Um, now, we're only given a picture of the first derivative, so we're going to use that. Um, but much like how the first derivative can tell you about intervals of increasing or decreasing, minimums and maximums, all that information about the original function f, the second derivative um, can also do the same thing. Uh, it can tell you all that information about concavity and inflection points about the original function f. But we're just given the first derivative, and so let's think about it. Um, hopefully this isn't too weird of a way of explaining it, but just like the first derivative can tell us information about f, right, where the first derivative is positive, that's where the original function is increasing, you know, where the second, or I mean, sorry, where the first derivative is negative, that is where the original function is decreasing. So we're going to use that, uh, well, we're going to use that evidence here as well. So if we took the derivative again, right, that would be the second derivative, right? You can think y now equals f double prime, right? We weren't given a function, so we can't do that yet. But if we think about it, where, um, wherever the second derivative is greater than zero, that's going to be where the first derivative is increasing. Right? Because it's a derivative. It happens to be the derivative of a derivative. But we can think about uh, that in the same way that we do from the first derivative to f. We can think about the same concepts from the second derivative to the first derivative. Right? So when the second derivative is greater than 0, that's where the first derivative is increasing. Okay, well, we also know that when the second derivative is greater than zero, that's when the original function is concave up. So we weren't given a formula. We can't solve for the second derivative. We only have the first derivative uh, graph here. So we're going to use this information right here to figure out where f is concave up. 
right? And so again, I'm going to follow that logic. The second derivative, that gives you information about the original function. When the second derivative is greater than zero, that is when the original function is concave up. Well, we don't have the second derivative. We only have the first derivative. But it just so happens that since the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative, we can use the same, the same way we talk about the first derivative about the original function, we can do that here. So we can understand that when the second derivative is greater than zero, that means the original or the first derivative is increasing. So to find where f is concave up, we just need to look for not when the second derivative is greater than zero because we don't have the second derivative. We just need to look for when the first derivative is increasing. So where is the first derivative increasing? Here's a picture of a graph, right? First, it starts going down, that's decreasing. And then when we hit this point, it starts going up all the way until this point, right? So all through this interval, the first derivative is increasing. That's where f is concave up. Also, from here until here. Right, f prime is increasing from x equals one to x equals three. Then the first derivative is decreasing. Then from x equals five to x equals seven, it's increasing. And then from seven to eight, it's decreasing. And then from from eight to nine, it's increasing. So all the points of increase of the first derivative are right here, right here, and right here. That's where f is going to be concave up. So that is going to be over the interval one to three. I'm not going to have enough space there, I don't think. Let's see, I'll fit it up here. So this is for d. f is concave up over the following intervals, right? One to three. five to seven, and then union. Still didn't have enough space, I'm just gonna write it down here. Eight to nine. Okay, and now where is it concave down? Well, um, it's uh, the, this is a bad way of explaining. It's the opposite logic of this. So now, if we want to know where f is concave down, we're going to look at where the second derivative is less than zero. That tells us when f is concave down. And whenever the second derivative is less than zero, that's going to be when the first derivative is decreasing. So where is the first derivative decreasing? Well, it's decreasing from zero to one. It's decreasing from 3 to 5, and it's decreasing from 7 to 8. So it's going to be concave down over the interval 0 to 1, union. 3 to 5, union. 7 to 8. Okay, so now we need to think about inflection points. Inflection points are wherever we change concavity, right? Those are the x values at which the concavity of f changes. And so we can kind of use these intervals here to help us out with that. Um, another thing we can do is just like when the first or when the original function has a minimum or max, we know that we can use the first derivative wherever the first derivative equals zero. That's where we have a minimum or max of f. Um, we can do the same thing here with inflection points, right? The second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. So wherever the second derivative is zero, that's going to tell us the inflection points of f. And also, whenever the second derivative is zero, that's where we have a minimum or a maximum 
of the first derivative. So I, yeah, I guess I'll write that out. We have when the second derivative equals zero, we know two things. We know that f has an inflection point. We also know that the first derivative has min or a max. So we're going to use this information here because we don't have the second derivative, right? So the minimum or maximums of f, that's x equals 1, x equals 3, x equals 5, x equals 7, and x equals 8. You could also notice it's where these interval endpoints are. But I just wanted to explain that really quick. Okay, so uh, I'm actually just going to erase this graph at this point because it's kind of messy. I'll erase that as well. And I'll kind of summarize everything. So the first derivative can tell you a lot of information about the original function f. We were able to figure out where um, uh, intervals of increasing for f, right? So increasing was over the following intervals, 2 to 4, union, 6 to 9, right? And this is where the first derivative was positive. And then we found intervals of decreasing as well of f. That was from 0 to 2, union, 4 to 6, right? This is where the first derivative was negative. Right, and then we found minima and maxima. So I think B was minimums. So we had a min at x equals 2 and x equals 6. Now let's see if I can fit C over here just to keep some space for the last two letters. Um, we also had to find maximums. which were x equals 4. All right, again, we found the minimums and the maximums of f um, by looking at where the first derivative is 0 and checking either side of where the first derivative was 0, right? We call those critical points. So we check either side of the critical points. We see to the left if f is, sorry, if the first derivative to the left of the critical point is positive, and then negative to the right, that's a max, right? We're increasing and then decreasing. And the opposite for the minimum value. And then for D, we had to find uh, intervals of concavity. So, um, right, concavity is the bowl shape of the original function f. Wherever it's concave up, right, that's like a, a bowl that's right side up. That is where the second derivative is greater than zero, or where the first derivative is increasing. And so we found that it was concave up over the interval 1 to 3, 5 to 7, and 8 to 9, right? These are the intervals where uh, the first derivative was increasing. And then we found concavity down, right, where, where f was concave down. All right, whenever f is concave down, that means the second derivative is less than zero, or the first derivative is decreasing. So here we have the interval of zero to one, three to five, seven to eight. And finally, we found the inflection points. The inflection points, um, that is where uh, concavity changes, right? So this is where the second derivative is equal to zero or where the first derivative uh, has a minimum or a maximum. And so we found those values at x equals one, three, five, seven, and eight. One, five, 
seven and eight. Uh, so there you have it. There's actually, if, uh, you know, there's, there's more than one way to do these types of problems. They're more just about critical thinking than they are about algebra um, type of problem solving. So um, this stuff's actually really helpful if you understand what the derivative is telling you. Uh, it has um, you know, implications in all sorts of app uh, applications.